Welcome back. We're back with another episode. Ooh, this mm-hmm. shit's, shit's looking better, you guys, huh? Yeah. Last time, don't mind what happened last time. <laughs> no, people were saying that it looked good, but also I don't think... I didn't like the audio. Yeah, I, looking back at it, I didn't like the audio either. But mm-hmm. but we did it, you guys. Like Even though we, you guys know that on the last podcast, we talked about how sometimes we don't like how things look, mm-hmm. so we don't do them. But this time, we didn't like how it sounded, but we still put it up for you guys, and they were happy. So I think they just wanted to see us after eight months of going missing. Oh my god, eight months! I know, isn't that crazy? No, but that's a good. That's that represents like I feel like I had a personality change, and that's like when a child's born. So I'm been reborn. Well, nine, nine months. months. Nine months. Is I'm I'm like complete already. It's been like <laughs> nine months now, so I'm complete. Yeah, I know. Me too. I feel like we. Yeah, we talked about this on the other one too. Like. We've changed, you guys. We're new women. Everything I've ever said eight months ago, I don't know if I stand by it anymore. Anything I say ever, I never stand by it. (laughs) Like, anything could change at any possible moment. Huh. Yeah, that's why whenever I say anything, I'm like, I allegedly say this. Don't hold anything against me. Because, no, alleged. I know. Yeah, you have to say alleged, because nowadays, you don't know. You don't know what could be going on. Everyone's trying to say things and things. Um, But, yeah. Oh, I was looking at my phone because... I told you guys on Instagram if you guys just wanted to share some things with us. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, no. That kind of sounded cool. Though. Yeah, like dong. Yeah. <laughs> the like, twelve like, hour. Like, oh, like in yoga when you do yoga, like in other countries, they put the bong. Oh yeah, um, yeah. That's like, like it's we're starting. Mm-hmm. It's just about to start. <laughs> um. But yeah, I told you guys to like kind of share like little tea. I would ju- I just I kind of wanted to hear some tea, and I'll, I always stress out on like, oh, what am I gonna say? What am I say? But I kind of wanted to hear what you guys are saying. Um, so I posted like a little Instagram story saying to like share us your tea. Okay, we'll share a couple of tea and then we'll move on. And then if we get any interesting ones during, then I'll say them. But. So let's start off with this person who said, I cheated on my boyfriend with my guy best friend and I gave him head. I had a reason though, we still together. Oh, wow. I can't say that I haven't heard something like this per- in my personal life. Cause I Wait, have. you personally d- went through something like this? I have a friend who did something like that and he, they confessed to me. Oh my God, wait, you should. <laughs> I'm not going to say, I don't, I mean, I'm not, y'all, I'm not, not going to get the tea from me because I'm a good ass friend, but. They confessed to me, and I was like, you're questionable, <laughs> so I stopped fucking with him. Honestly, yeah. I re- that's a really interesting story. I really wish we could open up about it more, but we can't <laughs> for, like, personal reasons. No, and then, the fact like, he also told me not to tell. Oh. <laughs> Wait, can you guys cut? <laughs> like, cut the- okay, they told me not to tell Sarah, and I was like, oh, I'm not going to tell. Okay, and then I went and I told her. <laughs> but, I mean, she's not going to tell anyone. No, no. Are we, tell? Oh, we already told Diana. So, wait, now we're just exploding and we don't I mean, I'm sorry. I will tell Sarah Nana. Okay? okay, no, it's because, like, this this thing was messed up. So, honestly, it didn't deserve to be held in because it's just really rude. And, like, I wouldn't have been able to hold it against her meal. Like, she had to know. She had to <laughs> I know. She had to know. She had to know. Honestly, that story ruined my day. But what do you think of this? Well, if you can tell the person, you, you should. I can't. That's why um, I told her. Instead. Yeah. Um, well, you cheat on your boyfriend. Oh. She cheated on her boyfriend. She she gave her guy best friend head. Oh. There's, her and her boyfriend are still together. Oh. Karma, babe. Mm-hmm. Karma. Been there. But she says she has a reason. If he did the same thing, then, okay, you guys should just be in an open relationship. Yeah. Which we said that we are going to be in one. Oh, yeah. This is our Open advice. relationships, I think, are the new mm-hmm. wave for... Me personally, in the upcoming years, because I don't know, infidelity is a big thing, and like I just don't feel. And then imagine our boyfriends are like our friends, like that's better. And then that way, I don't trip on you. I don't trip on you. So when (laughs) I go out, don't be tripping on me. That you know what I mean. That way, like you gave your best friend head. That's cool. Like I'm gonna give your cousin head. Like that. Okay. If you're open though, then that shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be a problem. (laughs) But you know, like. (laughs) <laughs> dude 
Okay, not your cousin. That's not incest, though, because that's not your cousin. That's her cousin. <laughs> but if you're in an open relationship, it shouldn't. Do you guys know Sugar Sean? Remember Sugar Sean? Yeah. Sugar Sean is a UFC fighter. He's in an open relationship, and he right. is married happily, and they have no issues. Right. Yeah. I told one of my I think friends. it could be a beautiful thing. Everyone I've kind of, like, brought it up, like an open relationship, they're like, no, 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 no. Did you tell a boy? Have you told a guy? I've told a guy before. What did they say? They say no. Why? But I'm like, I know you would want it. They didn't though. tell me that. Really? They said yeah. They didn't say nothing because they were like, because yeah, because they, they don't know no. what they're about. You know what they said? They said no. Like you wouldn't be able to handle it. They were oh. kind of putting it like on me. Like no. Like I know you would get jealous eventually. Because I think that in society, men are usually the ones that are promiscuous. Like mm-hmm. women are promiscuous as well. We're just not thirsty like that, so we're not over here trying to like get digged you know like that's not what we're looking for but we could if we wanted to we could and now that we're in a relationship i might they wouldn't i bet they wouldn't they wouldn't handle it no they, they wouldn't they can't no like uh you know what i've this is a fact like this is a fact in because i said so oh. guys handle cheating so much worse <laughs> yeah, than a girl if you cheat on a guy he literally dies if a girl gets cheated on she doesn't even trip like i mean she obviously she does but like we handle it so much better Mm -hmm. guys you can't do anything to them go 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 like talk to another guy or something like he will not ever or they'll lie and say that they do forgive you then they'll bring it up yeah or do something like no guys Mm -hmm. handle it really bad i think it's a really big really big punch to their ego. ego yeah Probably because we're already taught that. Like, I think even, like, being... I don't know if it's just, like, being Latina or whatever. But, like, mm. the Mexican women but don't... Like, they don't think that men are loyal, right? That's what yeah. we were, like, we're told that already mm-hmm. growing up. Like, growing up, it's kind of instilled in your head. Yeah, like, pues ya sabes como son los hombres. Ya sabes como son los hombres. Y, pues, pues, hazle de comer. Pues, yeah. ten tu casa limpia. Yeah. Or my mom, my mom still tells me to this day, like... No, no te vas a casa. Nadie te va a aguantar tu carácter. Oh, like, like we can't have anything. We can't have carácter. We can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Like, all for men. Like, the, y'all don't have the same position y'all had a couple of years ago. She's yeah. different. She's yeah. different. Or but. when they tell you, like, you need to know how to cook and clean and all that. Which, like, yeah, <laughs> obviously. But, like, I don't think that makes you, like, a bad person if or, you don't know how or to it doesn't make clean. you a, a wife just because you cook and clean what if you're yeah. hella rude to them <laughs> you know that's happened i mean i'm pretty sure yeah i don't know i you know what's funny since i grew up with my dad like he would kind of try to tell me like you should cook and clean and and so sometimes he would say so you could get married but i think that's because he generally doesn't even want me to get married because mm-hmm. i'm like his like little child he's he'd be like well, one day you may get married, you know? So, like, it might, te puede ayudar, que sepas limpiar. So, that's the difference between, like, I think he's kind of a little bit, gives a little bit more mm-hmm. room, wiggle room, but women don't. My mom doesn't. And she'll be like, no, like, tienes que, tienes que saber cocinar. Yeah. But that's not true. Yeah. No. What is that? I don't know. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I don't know if that was me. I thought it was something I don't know. I was like, I'm, I'm for sure. I was sorry. I thought I was having schizophrenia. I was like, <laughs> too. I was like, I'm, yeah, it's my time. <laughs> I'm fully developed. That there. really scared me. <laughs> I know. I was like, my brain thought my brain started to, <laughs> starting to come outside. <laughs> um, but what were we saying? Oh, how parents tell mm-hmm. you like, no, yeah. Sometimes if I have issues, like in my day to day, or like I tell my mom about an issue that I'm having. Like a lot of the times, at the towards the end of it, she'll say, "Pues un día te vas a casar, y si tienes este problema con tu esposo, like what are you gonna do?" I'm like, "No one's thinking about that right now. <laughs> like, I don't care." No, and then I guess like when you're little, I, what sucks is when you're little that you believe it and you would get it yeah. ingrained subconsciously. When you're older, you can be like, "Damn, my mom's not worried about some husband." Mm-hmm. Like you can see that it's coming from a bad place. Yeah. But when you're little, you do start to believe it. And I remember yeah. I used to fantasize about getting married. Like really? I, w- I would watch Twenty Seven Dresses. I don't know if you guys watch that. Like I would fantasize about wearing a wedding. Like I would fantasize. I think like when you're, because that's what they show in all the like. You think all little princess. girls do? Yeah. What about little, little girls who didn't grow up with their parents married? More or less? I think more because you you fantasize about having a family. So I would watch like the princess movies. I'd be like, well, one day my prince charming is gonna come and sweep you, and then you realize that 
he comes and he's emotionally available and he controls you. So right. like, yeah, the, there's not a happy ending. And I think that's good though to like say that a lot of women are being single now. Yeah. Remember the the oh, data? Yeah. There's more. There's yeah. I don't know. There's, there's more. There's single. more. No, the happiest women are single and unmarried. Yeah, <laughs> single. And unmarried. Which, but like, oh no, even kids. Though no I kids. heard that. I still would want to be married. I guess mm-hmm. and have. Me too. I would still want to have. Married. But then, like, then I think about the type of life that I live, <laughs> and I'm like, w- if I bring a child into the world, okay. am I gonna make them suffer? Oh, because of what I do. I think that I'm. I that's why I have to have kids when I'm older. Like married, I also think well, older. I think I'm open to like meeting someone maybe in the future. But I feel like I'm still so young. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how young I was until recently. I used to always be like, oh my god, once I'm past twenty one, like I'm old, like but but no, I'm still so young. I mean, my mom didn't have me until she was what thirty six. Mm-hmm. Like I'm still so young, and I change every year. I can't find someone right now. I'm going to change tomorrow. Like, I, you need to, it's really difficult to find someone that can change with you. A lot of people won't. And they'll remember you for who you are. And they try to instill things of who you are. Like, if I didn't, anyone that I did in my past, we're not going to get along. I'm different mm-hmm. now. You don't know who I am. You think that? Yeah, I know that for a fact. Okay, speaking about people in our past, <laughs> mm-hmm. do you find it difficult to completely let go of Ooh. things that are in the past? Because recently, I don't mm-hmm. know if I should put ourselves out there so much mm-hmm. no already we love our ex <laughs> but like we also always talk about them yeah 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 and we can't stop you know i think sometimes. it's a it's a hyper obsession i haven't brought it into there i'm gonna mm-hmm. but i think it's more so that i feel like it would like your first love well it's like our first love right? your, your first love you think that it's like the number one or your first trauma bond i think your first trauma bond and then you think that no one else is gonna like you and you think that no one else is gonna love you but also, when I really, like, nitpicked the situation, I was like, but I was also, conf- what's the word, confiding? Com- not confiding. I was, I made myself really small to be in that relationship. So, was mm-hmm. that even a, re- was that even like for me? Conformandome. to make that person happy. Mm-hmm. So, what it really, I think I'm reminiscing on maybe having, like, a, a relationship where the person, like, really mm-hmm. wanted to be with me because we were young. But mm-hmm. I'm not reminiscing on the relationship. Isn't it crazy how when you think back, on your ex and you think about your ex and things like mm-hmm. that you can only think about the good things well yeah. i can only think about the good things yeah. and why do my like there's so many bad things there's probably more bad things yeah. than good things but for some reason i keep thinking about our good times and i think mm-hmm. that's what like my brain like not does it on purpose i don't know like to be like hey remember this like Mm-hmm. like these moments like you want that again like why don't you want that those beautiful moments those, they were beautiful <laughs> moments but no they weren't they yeah. weren't but i don't know it's i think because i watched re- and you know what's crazy more recently it's like the mm-hmm. more that i'm not with them it's so annoying because your brain so forgets annoying. about all the bad things it's kind of like nostalgia like like it's just you know i, wa- I watched a video there's a video on youtube that's called like if i leave you i don't know if you guys have watched it's like very it's very sad i watched it a lot of times and it talks about and it says nostalgia is a liar on how it fakes all the moments but when you really look back it's not and i think that sometimes again we get instilled mexican people do this a lot i'm mexican so i'm i'm saying this <laughs> they you they, they stay with the same person for 50 yeah. years we were literally talking about this yesterday we were yes. in tj and she was like have you noticed that all of <laughs> <laughs> that a lot of people. like people and even our family even people mm. in my family like they stay with the same person for a decade and they complain every day every and every day. day they stay with the person and i think it sucks because there's so many wonderful people in the world and like when you're if you're not healed and you like get into a relationship and you like what are you like you're hiding yourself from so many things and that's why i love being single right now and i love doing whatever i want because i get to wake up i get to do whatever i want and i don't even think i'm openly dating honestly i'm not i'm not open to dating right mm-hmm. now at all because i want all this time for me like mm-hmm. i need this time for me i want to be with me i don't want to ruin my schedule for anyone like i don't want that and people in mexico i think that it's instilled in them like el novio <laughs> y no porque y la novia cuánto y ya no quieres comer porque Tienes, que coqueta. Like, it's just all in our thing. I think maybe since we're in California, like, we don't have it that bad, but it's bad. And they it stay, and it, you have to stay with. Quédate con el papá de tus hijos. Eso mm-hmm. se bien mal. Eso sí, es el papá mal. de tus hijos. <laughs> ¿Qué van a decir si no estás con el papá de tus hijos? ¿Qué va a decir hijos? la gente? ¿Qué va a decir la gente? No. No, la tía va a andar hablando. Va a decir que tú no, no te yeah. crees bien. Or be like, 
tienen hijos con diferentes. Like it goes Ooh, on no. and on. Two marriages in a Mexican. <laughs> you're done. You're three even like my Love mom. That. Like she's had like four marriages. Mm. I remember my grandma told her like. Like she, she, did? she yeah she told her that she wanted her to be married like <gasps> that she before she died she wanted her to be with someone i think my mom was with someone but now my grandma died i was not with someone no more <laughs> but at least she she went mm-hmm. she left thinking my mom was with someone oh what that but she so, now she knows the truth i think that when you're in heaven you, you and, get complete yeah like, and my grandma too if grandma if you're listening in heaven like I'm sorry, you didn't know what was up, like, to be honest, because I don't know if she gave the best advice. <laughs> well, <laughs> but she know, knows now, like, you know, yeah. she, she she talks to the angels now and she, she knows what's up now. Yeah, but at the time, like, my one of my aunts had a really, really, well, you know, I'm talking about one of my aunts had a really, um, is going through in a really abusive, maybe I'll bring her on one day, um, a kind of like an abusive relationship. And she also told her, before i die like i want you to fix your things with your husband and my grandma knew that he was abusive but like she's she still wanted her to fix oh she knew him yeah she knew well yeah she knew him and she and she would tell her about him their and problems. stuff like that about their problems but like even though she told her what she was going through she still wanted to be with her and i was like why why though because i th- i think that too like my dad you know how my dad is like really old school my mm-hmm. mom she's a libra you bring his like but she's a little bit more free if you have a, you if you know how libras are they're free flowing like they don't conform mm-hmm. to shit but she still says things too but my mom is a little more but my dad i feel like i've said things to him or even i've told him like oh so and so mistreated me like a guy mm-hmm. and my dad doesn't see it and that's right? a guy yeah. um, and you would but we're so, in mexico like the women in the the past years get mistreated so ask anyone Horrible. from their grandmas and they'll be like la golpeaban todos los días al esposo, pero pues ella se quedaba ahí por, porque mm. ese es su esposo, <laughs> el padre de su... Like, it's so weird. And then you would think, why would you guys give this advice? Because I think they're not coming from a bad place. They want you to have a stable foundation. You know, my dad says that before he dies, he wants me to go to school. And I was going to go, but now I'm like, dad, maybe I should. I don't want my dad to die and think that I didn't do anything. But I also told him, as I said on the last mm-hmm. pod, I'm not going to do stuff because people tell me to. I would be... I'll be going against my own will. I, yeah. I'm a free spec. I came to do whatever I want. So I'm glad that that wasn't really put on us. I think that mm-hmm. we're the kind of the like Generation Z where we can do kind of more open stuff. But I don't think our parents had that growing up, like no. even mental awareness or like taking self care. That wasn't a thing. That was yeah. not a thing. I know. That's crazy. I know. Imagine, I don't know. And it's so crazy because like, I'm like, I don't want to be obviously like, the past generations like i want to evolve and change and grow but i'm like what if i still have like some reminiscence like what if i have kids and then subconsciously i tell like not subconsciously without, oh, comments. N- without knowingly i tell them something that's truly hurting them but i think mm-hmm. it's the best for them because like i bet my grandma didn't want to hurt her kids mm-hmm. but she's telling them really horrible advice yeah so like what if I do that with a kid? I'm like, oh, this is why I can't have kids right now. That's know, what I always like, think. I mean, even like my niece is watching right now. She's right here. Even sometimes I talk to her and I don't really, I don't have a really connection with pets. I know I know you guys don't think I'm not a dark person. I just, I can't connect because I, I really don't like, lo- I'm Lotus. I don't like losing things. Mm-hmm. I don't like, and pets, I can just control myself. Not like, be like I, don't, I don't want a pet. Mm-hmm. No, no, I want one. And I can like stop it. But men friendships family you can't control how you feel about those people so that's why i'm like like i so leaving her sometimes i try to give her advice too and i notice that i don't give the best advice sometimes or i make little comments that sound like my mother mm-hmm. and i'm like oh my god you know these days no, you start turning into too. your mother yeah but what you have to do i think is be like you know what and it's really hard to change it's really mm-hmm. it's really really hard but when you go to therapy and like you talk about these things I think you have to be willing to change. And a lot of people aren't. And honestly, I used to be like, oh my God, what's up with people? Why don't they go to therapy? But now I understand why people don't go. Now I'm understanding. Is it's so really difficult. hard. Even like more recently, like maybe we can even ask her. I've been mm-hmm. trying to be really nice. And even sometimes I get frustrated with her. And I'm like, oh, you should do, I want her to do this. I'm like, well, you should go to Pilates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I like Pilates. Doesn't mean everyone needs to go to Pilates, you know? Mm-hmm. And I try, I'm now I'm like, well, you should do what you want to do. You know, you should do what makes you happy. Because I know when I would get advice from my parents, it would hurt me sometimes. I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. And 
I don't care if that's what you want me to do. And, and you don't see it as they're helping me. You see, like, they're rude and they're hurting mm-hmm. my feelings. And that sucks to know that you're making someone feel like that. Yeah. So now, I'm like, and now that I know, I need to really take um, responsibility and not make others feel like that. Yeah. So I have, I, me, I'm like, me, make, I'm like, validation. I'm like, but I've been trying really hard not to tell her anything, not even about how, like, anything. Even if I think, like, you should do your hair like this. Like, yeah. no, I, I should just shut up because yeah. she's her own person and I'm not letting her be. And I think that's practice for me. So when I have kids, I'm going to try to be the same way. Like, I know. Because it's hard. You want people yeah. to be like you. Tell, like, you should tell the story of when we go paint. Oh, what? Sorry. Our paint class when the kids go and they. Oh, okay. Because we, we have been loving going painting. I'm looking at our beautiful <laughs> masterpieces right now. Right in front of us. We could show it. Yeah, yeah we should show it. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Um, Most of them are yours. <laughs> I know. Mine were oh, too cute. Can, can we show the two waterfalls so we can compare the two? <laughs> Not compare, but like just show our differences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a competition. <laughs> but yeah, recently we've been going to a lot of paint classes just to like de stress. I think mine has my sig. My sig. <laughs> mine is. Mine is this one. No, you can't even see yourself, so you're good. Okay, so we'll show our paintings. Ooh, ow. This is my artwork and that is just all's artwork and as you can tell they're very different should we put them closer yeah they're very different but both very beautiful in their own way and i feel like you could really see our different personalities by the things that we do Mm because i think painting really speaks and like creativity creativity it's art and it's a form of expression um but yeah we have many more paintings like this that are completely different from each other but where I was trying to get to this is that people are really different. And sometimes you want things to go your way and mm-hmm. you want, pe- like, so, okay, at the beginning of our painting, sometimes, not going to lie, I would look at other people's paintings. I still And I would don't. be like, they should do <laughs> this and this. But, like, who am I to say? Mm-hmm. Like, the, it, but creativity, like, you're, the way that you do things is the way that you do things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's the beauty of everyone mm-hmm. of like they just do things at their their own way and we never we're never gonna me and just are never gonna have a painting that looks exactly mm-hmm. alike because she's her and i'm me and that's beautiful and okay that, imagine if everyone everyone's painting looked the same that would we be would live boring. in like boring i don't know like in robotic worlds yeah and i love that little kids go a lot of little kids go and they they are triggering because <laughs> they do whatever they want on their painting. And for a person <laughs> they don't, who is a control, they don't even sometimes follow the the rules. I mean, no. they're not rules. And I'm like, they don't follow like the directions, and they just do and whatever. Because they're children, like they're you know they're supposed to be creative and do whatever mm. they want. And and see like as, as a, if I ha- had a kid. Mm-hmm. as a parent i would be like yeah splatter on it do whatever you want like don't even follow any rules mm-hmm. like do what, find your your art to your own art but like they they're so funny mm-hmm. and i and honestly sometimes we should embody kids mm-hmm. because we should try to be like them a little bit because they don't take anything so you think they care about what the teacher's trying to show no. on the wall no they do whatever they want and they're happy and then they love their painting there, there was then, actually a kid who I mean, I don't, beautiful painting, but he actually painted his whole, like, canvas black. And I was like, period, like, period, me, like, period, like, he went off. And there's also moms who take their kids, and mm-hmm. then we hear what they're saying, right? And there was yeah. a really, really encouraging mom once. She was yeah. like, the daughter would do literally any stroke, and she'd be like, oh, my God, let's just say her name's Mackenzie. She's like, Mackenzie, you're really good at this. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just really going off right now. And yeah. I was like, we're like, that's how we need to be with our children. Like, anything mm-hmm. they do, just encourage them. Because I think in this life, what really makes you go is at least one person believes in you, and you want your parents to believe in mm-hmm. you. I, mean, I, I was thinking about today, I was like, what makes us have trauma? Like, what mm-hmm. makes us have, and it's honestly, because we, it's sad that kids want to make their parents happy. That's what we really want. And you just create cycles when you feel like you've let them down. Yeah. And instead of helping our children, we make them feel bad and, mm-hmm. and i was like this is great that we're seeing like a parent and she she some some of the children don't follow the rules and the children the moms are like go off yeah like, like who period, cares period. and that and that's a wonderful thing that yeah. i recommend if you have kids take them to paint yeah honestly yeah you guys should take them to paint classes or go for yourself even if you're an adult mm-hmm. go to a paint class it's the honestly one of the best things we've done this year mm-hmm. just in terms of like de-stressing and 
finding like just peace for a little bit i find myself not even going on my phone that much while i'm painting like i'll you can, check huh? it once but you can't really be on your phone like nah, you need you to be concentrated yeah because the class will move forward and <laughs> there's even some kids that are really good but way better than us like yeah. they go <laughs> off on the paintings and it's super cool to see like everyone do their own thing as humans and mm -hmm. like but then it's also like right now that we're thinking about like parents who really really encourage their kids and like are always like positivity then it's like where do you draw the line on like boundaries and like like do, making your kids follow certain rules because there are some rules that you need to follow as a child and i think sometimes oh, i struggle with that too like would i be like i don't want to be too much of a cool mom because then mm -hmm. like the cool moms their kids oh like you with your cat yeah and i <laughs> yeah and i'm and i'm bringing this up because sometimes she'll tell me like you're like the cool mom like on tiktok like <laughs> you don't tell your cat anything sometimes my cat will like attack people and i think it's the <laughs> cutest thing and i'm like oh she's so perfect yeah. like everything she does is perfect like she can literally like tear the house down i'm like perfection like yes you did it but isn't but, it a go to um I got, practice even with cats it is yeah and, and then but but i do worry because i'm like if i'm like this with my cat like how will i be with my children like that's <laughs> worrisome i don't want to be super enabling all the time mm -hmm. like because she does need rules and sometimes the things she does are not right like she can't mm -hmm. scratch the couches and sometimes i will see her scratch couches and i don't want to tell her no but i know i have to tell her no because there's things that she just can't do you know what i mean mm -hmm. but it's like with your kids they're so it, they're your, they're your another part of you so it's like what do you do they're just so i cute. feel i was um remember when we talked about like boundaries with parents like mm -hmm. when um i remember my therapist told me one time that when your parents are getting older especially like 50s 60s they start turning into children too yeah. so you have to so what do you do with a child when they do something you have mm -hmm. to reinforce good behavior so i yeah. think that's what i would do i'd be like i'd be like we can't do that right now, mm -hmm. you know? And then obviously sometimes kids are not going to understand. I, I, that's what I'm guessing. They're going to get, I don't know. I'm not ready for a little <laughs> tantrum. I'll deal with it when it comes. But, and then when they don't do it, maybe be like, thank you for not doing that. That's really awesome mm -hmm. work. And I think that also in like the Mexican culture, it's not, that's not a normal thing to applaud good behavior. Yeah. Like they're like, pues eso lo que debes de hacer, así te debes de portar, eh? porque mm -hmm. luego le caes mal a la gente. Like, yeah. They don't really, that's not normal, but I think that should be a thing, like mm -hmm. reinforcing positive Or things. even when, when um, like you would get good grades in school, mm -hmm. like at least my Mexican parents like wouldn't really congratulate me. It would just kind of be like, ah, pues así, yeah. Like that's <laughs> yeah. how it has to be. Like, yeah. like it's not really like, oh, good job. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, well, that's how it has to be anyway, so you better keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like, that's not really motivating because, mm -hmm. like, I want to be validated. Obviously, mm -hmm. as a kid, mm -hmm. you need that, like, empowerment. And in a lot of Mexican households, it's like, no. I don't know. And maybe it could be in a lot of... I heard it was, like, um, immigrant parents, too. That, really? Because they're like, well, I already brought you to this country. You should just speak already great. Which we are. I think everyone mm -hmm. is. But we still are, like, children. We still are, like... You know, yeah. we still, everyone wants validation. And the sad part is that if you don't receive it as a child, then when you're older, you seek it from other people, from guys, from mm -hmm. external, and then you suffer. So it's like, great. But, you know, that's that's why that's why there's a bunch of help now these yeah. days. But, yeah, I think that's a problem. I, that's yeah. what I was thinking, too. And I was like, honestly, I should practice it on my dad. Yeah. I can't do it. I haven't been able to do it yet. But I'm going to practice it. And I'm like, thank you for not reminding me again about that. Yeah. That was awesome. I do try to practice on my mom. And sometimes I feel bad because I'm like, she's not a kid. Mm -hmm. But then also sometimes I do have to remind her of things. Because she, she I know my mom never comes from a bad place. Mm -hmm. But she has a very, and I bet you can relate with your mom mm -hmm. too, where they do things. Older, like older thinking. That you don't want to control them. But they just do things that are like, why do you have to, like, <laughs> why there's do you have no to? reason for this right now. Like, yeah. just stop. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that with my mom all the time. And I have to remind her all the time, like a kid. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, don't do that. Why? Because it makes, and maybe I'm being selfish. So I'm like, it makes me uncomfortable. And I feel like it's going to make you look bad. And honestly, that may be a bit of my issue. Like, I do try to control my mom a lot. But it's because sometimes your parents are really frustrating. Well, remember, want me to tell a story? When we were, get, we, we have 
we've had these like giveaways well, not giveaways we, we go get back to the people in mexico and oh. we take our moms mm-hmm. because they like get along and it's just like mm-hmm. a little vibe and my mom will try to control what we should <laughs> give and i'm like mom we're giving back like stop i she gets she gets on my nerves a lot so i'm like stop but i'm like i guess it's just practice practice because i remember the there's like the spiritual video that we've sent each other that it's like the people that frustrate you are your greatest teachers Mm because you're like okay there's a lesson to be learned here like we don't know what my they told my mom when she was little like a Mm -hmm. a like she Mm -hmm. i'm thinking that her her like the way she grew up was very like with limits Mm -hmm. so she still feels that but i can show her that you know this is just not what's going on right now and Mm -hmm. i think that with my mom it's a little bit more frustrating because I don't have the best relationship with her, so I'm already frustrated with her mm-hmm. beforehand. With my dad, he can say frustrating things, and since I don't live with him, and I I feel like he's like declining on age, I've been trying to be more patient with him. Mm-hmm. Like he'll say things, and I don't I don't feel the need to comment anymore. Mm-hmm. But when he says things that affect me, and then I'm like, okay, limits. I'm gonna remove myself now. Yeah. But with my mom, I I you know I, I went to her. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's already frustrating me like this and that. But I'm like, well. I, it's a good practice for us to be patient with our parents because one day we're going to have kids and they really we're showing them how to be yeah. so no that's yeah the same way parents are great teachers mm-hmm. for you because at some point you and your parents ideas i like when you're a kid like your parents are your everything and they're like your literal world world and like they're just your universe they're everything for you and then obviously you know, you start believing your own things, you start making your own friends, you start going to school, you hear other adults, so things start changing, and then you start seeing things differently than your parents, and the more you grow older, I think the bigger that gets, like, Mm -hmm. the more you guys start becoming your own human, and it is difficult because it's like, you're not, you don't want to control another human, but it's like, parents don't know what they're saying all the time, they're not right all the time and just because they're your parents does not mean they're correct and it's not a diss to parents like i love my mom and everything she said i respect her but like yeah i have to admit that sometimes what she says is just uh, but also have pocket, to like realize that she is 55 years old that's half of a decade like she's probably not going to live another 50 years mm-hmm. so i have to be patient and i have because she's like my yeah you're right like she's my teacher and she's like helping me i guess grow but if you guys feel frustration with your parents let us know in the comments because i know it's like a big thing and then you feel guilty with feeling frustration with your parents i'm like oh they're gonna die one day no i need to be nice to them but you can't always be nice just because you think that something's gonna happen bad something something bad is gonna happen to them you know like why am i just gonna be nice to gazelle because she might die next week like Mm -hmm. no i have to genuinely want to do it want to be nice to her and like you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so then i I get frustrated i'm like so then i shouldn't be trying to be nice all the time but then i should because what if this happened but then so it's like it's like the (laughs) that's me all the time i think that um i was thinking i feel like there's some things that if they bother you enough and they keep this is what i because i have intrusive thoughts where i'm like something bothers me like let's shoot me right now like she's touching her ear i'm annoyed i'm like i don't like that and like it but i'm gonna get over it like Mm -hmm. that's not gonna cause me any harm Mm -hmm. when mia touching her ear isn't gonna do me any wrong Mm -hmm. i'm just i and i can remove my ego from it and be like okay that's not gonna affect Mm -hmm. me there's some things people are doing that could affect me me as making comments maybe she keeps walking past when we're recording that's affecting me now so i'm like Mm -hmm. i'd be like hey you i really don't appreciate if you don't do that Mm -hmm. so i think when you're with your parents if it's affecting you where you can't function it's needed brought up if Mm -hmm. i'm with anyone or anything and if it's not then you're like you know what i can see another way through this and we can move past it Mm -hmm. it's fine but i understand what you mean like sometimes i know my dad will make comments my dad is like really homophobic like yeah i mean that's that's how mexican parents are he's always has been and i like going a lot it's always it's i live on edge when i'm with i I, i'm even like surprised that i'm not constantly on edge right now because he's the person who says everything really loud in spanish he doesn't even speak mm-hmm. english we would go out to eat a lot um if you live in san diego like in hillcrest mm-hmm. and he would make comments all the time and i would be like 16 7 years old like oh my god when they're gonna like beat him up mm-hmm. and i don't want him to make these comments but and i try to educate him but he's a like 60 year old man now like i can't change what he thinks mm-hmm. the best thing i can do is just avoid those situations if i can mm-hmm. and try to like you know like there's nothing like and not 
take him there if he's gonna make those comments mm -hmm. and then if i hear him say something i just don't say anything i'm like i'm not gonna i'm just okay mm -hmm. well nice talking to you goodbye and that's one of those things like that mm -hmm. like i don't agree with him i'm not like that but he's his own person and, and i need to mm -hmm. just l let him be yeah and i mean i'm not gonna cut him off because of that yeah. but that's he's an older generation there's nothing but it would really frustrate me before but since yeah. i've limited my time with him a lot mm -hmm. and i only see him once or twice a week i think i'm able to do that and the few moments we have together he's not going to use him to bring up hate because mm -hmm. we're not talking about that yeah. but i'm sure if i was talking to him for a long time, time there has to be something it's gonna come up. it's he's gonna bring it up yeah and it's crazy because parents when they make comments towards you or towards other people they genuinely feel like they're helping <laughs> and i'm like you're not helping anyone right now like you're, yeah. you're making things weird everyone's and, annoyed now <laughs> yeah and now everyone's annoyed and you were never there like and uh, i'm annoyed at you yeah. so that's how i always feel with my mom i'm like yeah bye bye, bye. i noticed with moms Maybe more. Well, I don't really talk to my dad that much, so I don't know. I like moms, he would for sure frustrate me if I. Moms with daughters. They, I heard it's a thing though. Yeah, that moms would, love to nitpick the daughters. Like, like when your mom tells you something about your appearance or oh anything, God. but you don't you think she's genuine? She's genuinely trying to help you. She thinks that her comment is, <laughs> is yeah. very important. It's if she doesn't to be say said. it, yeah. <laughs> if I don't say it, like especially you will Libra not. mothers, Libra mothers, Libra moms, <laughs> because they're very like about looks and about how you like so they always have some always have something to say mm -hmm. and it's it's ugh. so i'm like hopefully with my daughter i never want to tell her like you're gonna wear that or like <laughs> mm, maybe another outfit like it's none of my business if she wants to look emo if she wants to dress in all red for a year straight mm -hmm. and look like a strawberry i don't care that's none of my business and she needs to do whatever if she wants mm -hmm. to dress up in the oreo outfit oh the oreo <laughs> like she wants to dress up in the oreo mm, outfit i'm not gonna tell her anything outfit. and even if i'm thinking about it in my head i need to go to the therapy and tell yeah. my therapist she could do whatever she wants yeah, as long as she's not hurting anyone thoughts come and go i think but as long as you practice not saying them mm -hmm. then it's good like i we've been i've been talking about this too with my therapist how i feel like i'm hopefully you guys have noticed i've been really trying to listen more and speak less because i feel like I'm constantly having thoughts and I can't, I don't let people speak sometimes. And I think she, and sometimes when I go on my little like manic rants, I say things and then I go to my room and I think back about what I said or I'll like have a conversation with Mia or someone else. And I'm like, wow, I don't know if I meant everything I said. And I'm really like precise about what I say because I don't want to just be saying anything. So I'm like, wow, maybe if I slowed down, I, I would be careful about what i said mm -hmm. so i've been practicing whenever i i don't know if i'm gonna say the best thing to maybe just not say anything and then maybe you know in those situations where you feel like you're gonna make a negative comment mm -hmm. just be like okay let me let me think about this mm -hmm. right now how do i want this to come out yeah and i think it's just like applying a filter to yourself mm -hmm. applying like a like a you know the thing where you put the spaghetti mm -hmm. so the water can come out like applying one to your brain like mm -hmm. before you start spilling apply a filter mm -hmm. and if it doesn't go through then it was not meant to be said mm -hmm. you know what i mean like just to really process your thoughts before speak 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 because that f overflow of words sometimes can either hurt someone mm -hmm. or just didn't need to be said no one had to know like mm -hmm. things like that so i don't know i i feel like sometimes i struggle with that and sometimes i don't and it's hard sometimes to think about putting that filter on and thinking about what you're gonna say because sometimes you don't even notice you just said it and you're like oh shoot why did i do that and then i think it's so frustrated in your in like the brain yeah. that you're so i do that too i'm like oh my god like i'm being a hater right now and i don't mm -hmm. even know that i'm doing it but you know what's the best thing like you could do for people and like i i won't like people to do to me it's just not saying anything because yeah. then you hear yourself and you're yeah. like wow no one said anything because what yeah. i said it was really rude yeah and that's how you can help people and that's what i went and i'm like i'm i'm like i'm so arrogant i would go on and on and on how i was so evil and rude she's like well it seems like you know what you're doing she mm -hmm. was like but can you like what what's gonna gonna take for you to stop and i'm like and that is true though when you take a lot of time to like hear yourself you don't even want to say anything because you mm -hmm. you're kind of like that you grossed yourself out oh, a yeah. little bad happened to me while i say something i'm like oh my god that was so nasty you yeah. know and i don't want to be mean and i don't want to have those comments because mm -hmm. that means that's how i feel about myself yeah. and i need to I'm like if i want to do what i need 
get done. I need to have complete love for myself. And I'm not loving myself by being mm-hmm. evil to others. So that's something that I've been working on too. And it's honestly really hard. I yeah. do it all the time. And I, 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 I'll say like, oh, I'm fixing it by only like being mean to people who have been mean to me or whatever. But I mean, still though, I shouldn't just mm-hmm. be mean to people. Like I should just not care. Because then that's just a cycle. Like mm-hmm. you're being mean to people who are mean to you. And then that's just back and forth. And yeah, then like they're going to keep being mean to you and you're going to keep being mean to them. Like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's yeah. uh, stop. Like, and sometimes, and then a lot of people on TikTok were saying, like, I hate being the bigger person all the time. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to be the bigger person. That's what I was Sometimes, too. like, like, they should be the bigger person. But, like, okay, sometimes if you notice that they're not going to do it, then you mm-hmm. have to step up. And that's okay. Like, there's mm-hmm. no shame in being the big. Like, I feel like now there's, like, kind of, like, this thing of, like, I don't want to be the bigger person. You know oh, I mean? like in relationships. Too. Oh my yeah. god, I, I just had a conversation about that actually. I don't know, and it's like frustrating because mm-hmm. I don't know. But humans are so funny. I know that is interesting. Like I was like talking to someone about like that, like Chill. what? No, a combo. Oh, my God, don't <laughs> a combo about like who should reach out first to who, <laughs> but like, and I've struggled a lot in the past where I feel like I have anxious attachment and I over speak a lot. And then I and then I'll even tell her and I'm like, oh, we messaged this person too many times, like we shut in. Like I go back and forth on being like annoying and not annoying or like this and that. But I've decided that the best way to just kind of like, you know, is to say what you you feel you need to say and have enough like <laughs> have enough respect kind of for yourself that when you know it's time to go, to go. But sometimes I get this urge in me and that's just my personality where I'm like, well, what if this person feels this way? And like, they're just not. Because you never know what people are feeling inside. And mm-hmm. I know how it feels to feel a lot of things and not being able, being able to express it. And I feel like I've been giving given by the personality gods that that I don't, you know, I, I'll, I will say and I will invite someone if like I feel like they're not willing to say. But once I feel like it's not being reciprocated after mm-hmm. many times, then I'm not going to do it anymore. Because then I used to hurt, I started hurting myself a lot by doing that when relationships or overexerting myself a lot like i talked mm-hmm. to another one and you can, it's kind of the same thing i think being the bigger like you can be the bigger person a couple times but mm-hmm. if that person just never changes then you're like you know what i'm not gonna i'm just gonna i need to cut you off because you're just you're not changing and that yeah and that's hard but i mean that's i think that, that'll save you a lot of heartbreak a lot of these stress that you don't need yeah. you know that's just because that's a problem that and i always think i'm like if I'm mad at this person or, like, they don't change, a lot of people are going to be mad at this person. Mm-hmm. That's just a personality trait. They're not going to change. And that happens with even an ex, right? Like, mm-hmm. remember, we always talk about this, like, oh, if they get a new girlfriend, do they change? No, I don't mm-hmm. think they do unless they, I guess they do, but I don't think that happens. And it sucks because, like, I don't know if you guys have been through this where you, like, break up with someone and then you see them with someone else and, like, they're doing everything <laughs> nice for them. And you're like, you never did this for me. <laughs> what happened with that what's up with that what's up with that dude (laughs) you kind of want to hit him up on like some chill shit like what's up with that why are you doing that like what the what it well when i said that yeah you said it was lame yeah and now you're out here doing it okay i have dealt with that so much i too so So it's really sad (laughs) but you know what you guys if you guys are going through that or have been through that who cares you look it hurts but Mm. we've all been through it and I bet you they're not that happy as you think. Yeah, so, well, yeah, they're not. So don't let their little cute post and the hundred flowers bouquet <laughs> impress you, okay? They're not happy. <laughs> Maybe they are. Maybe they're super genuinely happy. But yeah. you know what? In my head, they're not. And, that's, <laughs> and whatever. If it makes me feel better, then who cares? But I would think a mean person, unless they're not receiving help, is probably going to continue to be mm-hmm. mean. And yeah. yeah, you were really mean, like ex. You were really mean to me, and you're probably still like that. And I, and I feel bad for her. And I <laughs> feel bad for the girl. Yeah, I think that love is the answer. Remember, like love is the answer to a lot of the problems in this world. And I'm and when I get mad about my exes or anyone, I, I get mad if anyone I even had one conversation with gets a girlfriend. I'm me like, too. why would you do that? Like we convert, we comboed once, and you have a girlfriend now. What's up with that? Like yeah. But, like, that's, like, a silly t- part. But when you actually have a relationship with someone, it really hurts. Yeah. But I guess what you could think is that, like, you know what? Mm, the, the, you know, let's hope <laughs> that they did change. And yeah. you know what? Honestly, yeah. Hopefully he's better for her because mm-hmm. that would suck that he's out here doing the same shit to everyone. Yeah. And I've had that happen in a relationship past where he never, remember, he never posted me. Mm-mm. I think it took me about two years to get posted. I'm not, and I never even got posted good. It was a repost. Um, and then he would break up with me and then meet 
I think these girls were random and then post them in like two seconds. Well, what would happen? Do you guys, do you guys really think they ended up in Wait, a long who? relationship? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. He, he's to this day, this man is still not in a happy relationship. And yeah. that I know because you're true. True. Tom. Yeah. You're true. <laughs> you're not, you're, you never received help. And who does that? No. Yeah. Who does that behavior? And I would cry and cry and cry. I'm like, what's wrong with me? What yeah. did I do? Nothing. I'm awesome. I know that I'm awesome. Yeah. It wasn't me. It's you, buddy. You're the common denominator here. <laughs> and it took me a long, long time to realize that. But it takes time, huh? Time heals everything. And when time I noticed that he was just true and he kept doing the same thing, I'm like, you're a serial dater. Mm -hmm. And you're true. And then I didn't blame myself because I'm like, there's nothing I could have done wrong. I mean, because then I would date other people who didn't care about anything. And then mm -hmm. they would post me and they didn't care about that. So I'm like, anyone can do anything for you if they're willing to do it. Mm -hmm. But also anyone is not willing to do something just because they're not going to do it. Yeah. Just like being romantic. Like, either someone is or they're not. Yeah. But you don't have any any say in that, whether that person's going to be like that or not. Yeah. Did you see the Becky G situation? Did she go to? You think it's real? Yeah. I think it's real too. That sucks. That sucks, girl. That's why she should have been in an open relationship. She would have been in an open relationship. This would have never happened. <laughs> Just oh, kidding. Yeah. No, but well, yeah, she would have been open. <laughs> That's how we're, we're vouching for open relationships. Because look, look, this is you in open relationship. You're with your guy. Your he guy. goes out. <laughs> he says, "Just met a fine shorty at the club. I'm gonna leave with her after." Oh, oh my, my god. god. You pretend you don't care in the beginning. Then one day you won't care. I'm just kidding. I don't know if this is the best advice. But hey, like maybe one day you won't care. That's what I'm going to do. I'm That's gonna what I'm hoping I for too. I'm going to pretend I don't care. Us vouching open worship. We've never been, been in one. We don't know <laughs> how that would feel. I can't. Unless I, I've been doing this thing where I like, actually, no, I don't speak to men. I actually really don't. I know. I really don't <laughs> I'm lying. I don't know. I, you know what? I'm lying. We'll talk about this when we're in, in a relationship. And we're mm. in an open one and watch me be crying. I did, I did, um, what's it called when you pitch? I did pitch it to someone though. You, yeah, I had not it. them with me. They were trying to say me with you. I was like, no, not me with you. Like <laughs> me. I'm in an open relationship with myself, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have another little, like something that someone said on Instagram. Okay. Would you break up with your boyfriend if he slid up on a girl's post with the hard eyes? Yes. 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 Me if you're <laughs> still like, why are you with him? No. <laughs> yes, I would break up with him. This has literally happened to me. Me too. <laughs> like this exact thing has happened to me. So yes, I would for sure break up with him, and I did, because he's probably gonna do mm. something. Else. If you forgive that, for sure. Either okay, this is what you can do. Either you tell him right now, open relationship. <laughs> you will, you can keep doing that, but I will also, also be, be doing, doing things. Same. Or you say I cannot handle that. And we need to go our separate ways. I think that's the best thing you can do in that situation. And then, you know, okay, this is going to sound so weird. But in my mind, like, I don't know why that little that little small shit be bugging me. Like, mm -hmm. if they have sex with someone else, I kind of am more open to forgive that. <laughs> but, like, swiping, you're plotting on them. Like, you're plotting to fuck. Like, yeah. you're plotting to link up with them. That's mm -hmm. more annoying. Yeah. If, that, if I just find out that, like, they, like, linked up one time, one night, whatever. I'm more mad about that. Like swiping up. Why you're sneaky? You're weird. Yeah, you're I'm weird. Fuck with you. Yeah, because no, I've true. done that. So <laughs> I've done that. I've done that before. Like where I'm like talking to someone and then I'm still like talking to a bunch of people. Because why I'm sneaky? I don't like you for real. Yeah, they don't no, like you for real. They don't like girl. you for real. And that's sad, but it's true. If either they, likes you for reals, either they think that you're that they're you insecure. Th it. Either they think either they're really insecure and they think that you're gonna go do something, so they feel the need to go do something. Or they just don't like you for real. Mm -hmm. Because a guy who really likes you for real is not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have another little thing that someone sent. My boyfriend, my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend still comes over to his house to see their dog they used to have together. Okay. <laughs> Nah. What do you think they're doing when she when I she think they're playing over? Uno. I think they sometimes just like catch they probably up. take the dog on a walk, huh? Mm hmm Nude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do a nude twister. <laughs> While the dog is bored. In the <laughs> no, there's something weird going on there. Honestly, cut that. I don't know why whenever couples have dogs, I'm like, just one person keep it. Yeah, and just forget about and it. And forget Go get about another it. Dog. And get another dog. Like, I, I know mean, you can have a really, like, 
huge connection with the pet because I feel like mm. I love my cat. And I feel like if I owned it with another person, it's going to be mine. Mm -hmm. And like, <laughs> you know, so they you need to tell him like either you're going to keep it or she's going to keep it. And there needs to be a disconnect there. Whoever loves it more. There has to be someone who loves it more. It's usually the girl, huh? Usually I'm not the too, girl. I feel like it's usually the girl. Yeah. So let her keep the freaking dog. Yeah. No, honestly, I Especially would if you're in another relationship. If you're not going to get another relationship and you're still trying to see your ex, then okay. Because there's some people who probably like, they don't care about their ex. So they're probably like, okay, I can see the dog. But if you know that you're in another relationship and the person doesn't like it, why would you do that? Mm-hmm. He's like, what? Yeah. Oh, let them do that to me. Let them do that to me. I'm going to go do something with my ex, too. Yeah, I'll be like, oh, actually, I own uh, something really dumb. Be like, like, I actually, own a me and my ex my need ex. to shower every week. Yeah. Because it's be like, a problem we have. <laughs> <laughs> Together? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, okay. You know what you should do? Do this. Go tell him that you're going to go with your ex to go do... A, every week, you need to go <laughs> see him to do a really important errand. And let's see how he reacts. Mm -hmm. Tell him the same thing. Do the same. If he doesn't like it, there's something weird there. If he's okay with it, or tell him to take you with. Take you with. Yeah, be like, whenever she comes, let me be right here. <laughs> Chilling. Side eye. Literal side <laughs> eye. Okay. I have a friend who dated his cousin that he didn't know about until his family told him. Wait, what? So, like, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Let's say you are dating, you're dating a guy. Mm -hmm. You didn't know. He dated his cousin. No, you're dating a guy. You don't. You're dating a guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then your mom tells you, maybe a couple months later, that that's actually your cousin. <laughs> what would you do? I would like. Would you break up with him? I would, would go to therapy. Let's say you're deeply like in I love. Would okay, what if? What if they had told you like that? That someone I've dated is your cousin my god my god i would just try to forget about it and like never do that again and like when i date someone i would for sure do ancestry how calm or something that's, that's horrible because if it's already in the past i mean what can you do like, i think that's traumatizing my god. you need therapy for sure i heard there's people who like do that though who like date their cousin like, yeah maybe like the amish no no I heard in america they still do that no way I had a friend who had cousins like that but that's not I think, no, that's incest and that's illegal, no? Well, there's people who still practice it. No way. Sorry. I know I'm not even making it up. They practice it? Not practice it, but they're involved <laughs> in it. I don't think it's a practice, but, like, they're involved in it. I don't know. That's crazy. Dude, that is crazy. And I blame a lot of, like, the P-O-R-N, the corn, because there's a lot of, like, yeah, that type of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. And that's why I watch a lot of, like, ethical YouTubers, like, like vegan ones and there's even you know there's new sites for corn that are no. like that don't have um interesting um <gasps> names like it's like ethical like ethical i know and and but that's interesting to me i'm glad that that's happening because i even thought like i don't know what age boys start watching it or whatever but or girls whatever and it just starts putting these ideas you know in people's head and it is true yeah no i I agree. That's crazy. I don't think that should be allowed. And if that's actually really being done in America, that should really be stopped. That's not right. You're hurt. That's hurting other people. Honestly, yeah, it is. I don't think that's right. Um, what's our best dating advice? Your oh, best advice open ever. Open relationship. <laughs> oh, like realistic. Really. Realistic. <sighs> realistic. Oh my God, that's such an interesting one. I feel like realistic, realistic. I like what I wish. Like I. One could have told me from the get go. Well, probably someone did, but I just didn't take it. Is to just love yourself as much as you love someone else. Like the same. Never do more for a, like another than you would do for yourself. Mm -hmm. It will save you a lot of heartbreak and a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. And then you'll never like really suffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mine is. Yeah, try to be f whole within yourself mm -hmm. before finding someone before looking for another person. Because if you do, like, the... You know how there's a saying in Spanish and, like, Mexican culture, like, tu media naranja? Like, no, you should be one naranja. Mm -hmm. And then they should be one naranja. And then two naranjas is the best. Like, who doesn't want two naranjas? Instead of you being just a half of a naranja and him being another half of a naranja and then making one naranja. Mm -hmm. I think it should be two naranjas that 
are really happy together. Mm -hmm. But if they happen to be apart, they're still whole naranjas. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Tangerine. Mm -hmm. Right. How much time do you have? That's good, no? Yeah. We're gonna do a, you can do a la one last question, like a short one. Right? I know. Uh, let me see if I have any good ones. Because it, some people are sending... um. Oh, story time? Like super long ones. Tell people to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, okay. yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe, subscribe. Tap, tap, tap. Word to Shadi Bay. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Um, yeah, I would have uh, another. We can do like another pod for the more longer story times that you guys oh, sent. We should talk about how we want to do a Patreon. Oh, yeah. We well, want to open up a Patreon. Uh huh. For and we might do long. We could do longer pods on there. Longer explicit explicit pods. pods. Um, but yeah, yeah, that is a good idea. We're gonna start do working on that. Um, and then yeah, a lot of you guys. I'm sorry if we didn't like say your story on here. It's just that you know we got caught up kind of like talking about other things, and so couldn't read the longer story times. But make sure to subscribe. A lot of you guys are not subbed. Almost fifty percent of you guys are not subscribed. So please go and subscribe. It's free, and you don't want to miss any of our episodes because we're gonna be posting every single week. And yeah, subscribe, like, follow us on Instagram. Our Instagrams are gonna be right here somewhere, and then follow True Talk. Follow TikTok. Our like TikTok. Sure watch our TikTok. Go support us on TikTok and watch all of our things. <laughs> Please. Bye. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in our next video. <laughs>